Hi everybody, in this video we're going to learn about the Ken Burns effect and more specifically how to recreate that effect in CSS. So this will be a pretty fun one, so let's get started. So you're probably wondering, what exactly is the Ken Burns effect? Now, I'm not a, you know, a huge documentary person or someone who watches a lot of TV, but chances are you've seen this effect where you have an image and the image slowly pans and zooms in on a particular topic. Like think of this as one of those effects you see in these like very old timey documentaries where you want to like, you know, focus on one character in this like row of people. And instead of there's no video footage back then. So what you do is you take a photo and just like what I'm showing you on the screen right now, you'd slowly zoom in on that particular photo while there's a narrative or some voiceover going on behind the scenes to kind of give some added emphasis to what you're actually seeing on screen. Well, this seems pretty straightforward. and It seems like a very common sense effect, but it has a name. It's named after the documentarian Ken Burns. And I can't say I've seen too many of these documentaries before, but the effect is named after him. So if you ever want to talk about this effect, it's called the Ken Burns effect. And you can read about, about him on Wikipedia and how he really doesn't like to be associated with this effect. So it's kind of kind of interesting in many ways. All right, so now that we've got this out of the way, let's go and take a look at how to go ahead and recreate this. So the first thing we're gonna do is like all great applications, is start with a blank HTML page. And what I have here is not a fully blank HTML page. It has some stuff in it. There's a title, there's some you know style rules that I set here, and it has some content here, which is this, the Ken Burns effect, which you can see on the screen right now. But take a moment and create a new blank HTML page if you don't already have it. And you can add these additional styling elements that I've added here if you want to, but all they really do is give our text a different look and feel, and they provide some like, uh, like a background, a light color, that so it doesn't look like it's just plain white. All right. So the first thing you do to have a Ken Burns effect is you need an image. You need an image that is large enough that you can pan, that you can zoom in on and do some cool things to, to create an effect that you just saw a few moments earlier. And so what I'm gonna do is I already have an image and I'm gonna go ahead and just insert it right now. So image search source equals, it's in the images folder, example underscore sm2.jpg. As you can imagine, I actually you know, created this image earlier so I just know what it looks like. And so once I've created the image and inserted it using the image tag, you can sort of see it on the screen. I know I'm running it inside my code editor's preview window. You can just save it in your page and view in the browser and see something very similar. But the thing to focus on is the image that you saw earlier is the image that I'm seeing in, the, in my document right now. Now, the thing is, the effect is more of a, it's more of an effect where you have a large image but what you're seeing is essentially a very small portion of it, a small portion of it that you can then zoom, pan, and do clever things to. So the way we're gonna do that is by wrapping our image inside a parent container. So let me go and create a div. I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna give this a div an ID value of image container. Keeping it very clever here in my naming. And now that I've done this, you'll see that, of course, nothing magical is gonna happen because all I've done is just wrap our image inside the div. What's going to, what makes it really work is the style rule I'm going to be assigning that makes this image actually be cropped so that we can actually do some cool animations to it. I'm going to create a style rule. You know, because my div already has an ID value of image container, I'm going to make my selector just target the image container element. And the first thing I'm going to do is essentially give it a width value. Give it a width of, let's say, 450 pixels, height of 300 pixels. Essentially what I'm doing is constraining this image into something a little smaller. And here's the, here's the part that really makes this work. It's the overflow property that is in many ways the property is set for clipping the contents of a particular element. So in this case, our contents will be clipped by a box that is created by 450 pixels width and a height of 300 pixels. So I'm creating an overflow property of hidden. And if I just do this and hit save, you'll now see that, well, if I spell hate properly with the colon, you now see that our, what was our larger image earlier has now been cropped into this more manageable area that we can now pan and zoom the image around to create the Ken Burns effect. And since I'm already here, let me give it some, you know, some extra flair, give it, a, give it a border, like a dark gray border with a solid outline. All right, that, actually, that border looks kind of sad. Let's make it bigger, 10 pixels. Okay, that looks much, much better. All right, so now that we have this, all that really remains is what we're here for, which is to create the animation. And this animation is essentially going to be a pan and zoom, which is roughly translated into a, a timing function and a scale value, a transform of a scale 3D and translate 3D. 
And what we're going to show in a moment is what exactly that's going to look like. So first of all, let's go ahead and define the animation itself. And I'm going to keep this one essentially just, you know, not too long. So I'm going to get image container. Let's get this dot written first and declare the animation property. I'm going to give my keyframes the value of Ken Burns, have it run for 20 seconds, and then have it run forever. It's going to loop. And so now all that remains is to define the keyframes themselves. It's going to do that. Keyframes. Let's make sure to call our keyframes Ken Burns. And at this point, if you were to save your page and preview it, again, nothing's going to happen because as you probably know from the many videos and articles we read about animations, the, the keyframes are what actually define the properties and what changes at, it, at any given time. And so let's go ahead and fix that right now. So what I'm going to do is I want to have this effect be one where it loops forever, but I don't want the loop to be sudden. I want it to fade in very quickly, loop, do its thing, and then fade out very quickly as well. That means I will be animating the opacity property as well. So let's start with this first part, 0%. At the 0% mark, I want the opacity to be 0. I don't want the animation to be visible. But very quickly afterwards, at the 5% mark, I want the opacity to be 1. It'll be fully visible. And then now, here's where the Ken Burns effect, the zooming and panning that we saw earlier, here's where all of that really comes into play. So the first thing I'm going to do is specify the transform property. And what the values we're going to see here are going to be something you want to experiment with depending on the kind of image you're using and the effect you're going for. But what I'm going to do is the effect you saw earlier where we zoomed in on that one black sheep in the collection of sheep from what was a, once a picture of my desk. So first of all, I'm going to set the transform properties and set. I'm going to set scale 3D. I'm going to zoom everything in by 50%. So I'm setting the X and Y values for scale 3D to be 1.5. And then I'll set the Z value as well while we're at it. It doesn't really matter. And in parallel, while this is going on, actually, you know, let's just stop right here and let's just you know, add the animation timing function. Let's make it an ease in. And of course, the opacity is still going to be 1, so define that right here. Great. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just set a, a value of the 100% keyframe and set that to essentially another transform where we're going to be shifting and moving it on a little bit more. And let's set this one to scale by 2. Okay. And then opacity this time would be zero though. All right, now if we hit save and preview we have right here, notice that you can sort of see that our image is now scaling by 50% initially, and then towards the end, just before it is about to fade out, it'll scale in completely by, by two. It's gonna go fully in, then go completely transparent. And you'll see that in a few moments if you wanna wait that long, but I'm very impatient. Oh, you saw there. Okay, but what we just saw was just a scale 3D. What we really want is not just to zoom, we also want uh, the effect to kind of pan as well. And the panning is accomplished by the translate 3D transform. And so therefore, right after we define scale 3D, just put a space and then type in the translate 3D function. And let's go ahead and put, you know, in this case, 190 pixels for my example, minus 120 pixels, and then zero pixels for the Z value. Again, the Z value is there only to make sure hardware acceleration is kicked in. You don't have to specify that if you don't want to. And so now, notice now that when I save the page, we actually see the image actually zooming in and also panning and trying to focus on that particular one sheep that was, you know, that corresponds to its values that you see here. And the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that once you zoom in, that we also do the same thing for the 100% case, where we just zoom out just a little bit, you know, so that so the, it kind of looks like you're zooming out as opposed to zooming at a weird angle. And with that, you kind of have the effect going. You know, we can watch, you know, in fact, I'm just going to speed it up. I'm going to change it from 20 seconds to just 10 seconds so we can see it very quickly. So you can see right now we're zooming in on the sheep. It is, you know, he looks very, very guilty, but, you know, we'll see exactly how that all works. And once you zoom out, you can see that the image just fades out and everything is fine. The zooming out look kind of weird, right? And that's because I didn't specify the pixel values as part of the definition. So now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And you'll see that this time around, you can see that we're zooming in on the on the on the sheep and the sheep we care about, and then it zooms out and zooms in perfectly just the way we want. So there you have it. And I noticed another mistake. So basically, what you see in this effect is we have we clip our image, and then what we do is we have a CSS animation that then pans and zooms this image around. 
Now the thing is, the values I've shown you here for Scale 3D and Translate, they're very specific to the image like I mentioned earlier. So there will be some level of experimentation to do with your own image to make sure that your own image is actually something that corresponds to what you're trying to focus on. So play with these values and make sure that you get something that creates the same effect as well. These values only apply to the image that I'm using. So you can use my image if you want, but I'm not sure how applicable it is to whatever you're trying to highlight with this particular effect. So with that, you know, if you want to learn more, go to croup.com. And if you have any questions, you can always post in the forums at form at croup.com where I and other human beings will be more than happy to help you out. And of course, you can find me on Twitter at Krupa, on Facebook, and on YouTube. I'm all over the place. You just find me and I'll try to reply to you very quickly. And if you found the video in in interesting, if you like the articles I've written on the website, then there's a good chance of the book as well that covers this particular topic. For example, the animation book covers the Ken Burns effect. And books are a great way for you to kind of take on the road the things you're learning on the internet without having to have an active internet connection. And with that, if you really like this, you know, please tell your friends and enemies. Hit subscribe so that the follower count is really big and people think really highly of me. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook and of course buy a book. You know, the books are the primary way I sustain these videos and my extremely lavish lifestyle. So click on these links, share with your friends, and I will see you guys next time.